Hello and welcome back to our Melee AI tutorial series. I started this tutorial series quite a while ago and I apologise for it for taking so long to come out. And during that time I've uh, been dabbling on how to improve this a lot better as time has gone on. And I want to spend this episode going back and fixing and improving the way these enemies move around the player, towards the player and attacking the player. At the moment our behaviour tree is quite messy, so we're going to go through the process of tidying this up and make it work a lot better for us and uh, for the game in the long run. So quite simply we're going to gut a lot of this out and fix it for how we calculate the distance it needs to travel for the, to attack the player. So the very first thing I want to look at is our find player location task. I'm going to go into here and we're pretty much going to gut this thing because we're going to make this a lot more complicated with a lot more stuff in it. So I'm just going to uh, remove all this for now. I'm going to keep the finish. Uh, actually, let's get rid of all that as well. Get rid, of all, get rid of all of it. There we go. With your clean and empty find player location task, we're going to just add the get player character node. And from there, we're going to also get the actor location of our player character. So get actor location. We also want to get actor location for our controlled pawn here. Get actor location. And what we're going to be doing is calculating the direction between these two. And the reason why we want to do that is because we want the enemy to run towards the player, not past the player to find a location. So for this, we need to get direction. So drag from the top one and do direction. And you'll see get unit direction. So you want from the controlled pawn to the player character. And this give you a random direct, not random direction, this will give you a direction, sorry. From there, we're going to drag out and search for random unit vector in cone in degrees. And what this does is, imagine it shoots out a cone in a direction based on this degree angle here, and gives you a random unit vector within that angle. So from there, we're going to type in here, uh, let's do 60. So it's going to do 120 degree field of view in front of the uh, player character out to the enemy. And this guess I gets you a random direction. Okay, so now we need to multiply that by value. So multiply by a float. And I'm going to put in a new variable here. And this will be distance and a type of float. It's going to be float. And drag that into there. Hit compile. And make the default value for distance here to 300. And make sure you tick instance editable. That allows us to change it on the behavior tree uh, whenever we want as well. So now we're going to get a random uh, direction multiplied by random length. So now we've got a location out from the player character. Now we're going to randomize it a bit further. So we're going to drag out and do a random Point in navigable radius using the vector here as the origin. The radius can be quite short, we'll do 50. And the random location output and then go into our blackboard key selector that we had previously. So drag that out and choose get, and then we'll search for set value as vector. Plug in the random location into that value vector. So that's got our new value out. Now, before we get into plugging this all in, let's store the controller and pawn out as temporary local variables here. So here we're going to drag owner variable out and promote to variable. And this will be a controller. And we're going to drag the pawn out, promote to variable, and call it pawn. And hook those up. And then you connect it up to your blackboard value as vector. Okay, so that's got our random point, but I'm also going to do other things in here. So previously we used all sorts of manners of stuff here to set uh, various different tasks up. Now we can actually do all of this in one task. So at the moment I've got a walking task and I've got a focus task. I can combine these into this one task here, so it tidies up a lot better. So I make a new function here and do set walk speed. Now for this we need a value coming from a variable. So on the variables on the left, we're going to click new variable and we'll type in walk speed. And we're going to compile that and make that editable 
by ticking the editable box. Now the contents of this new function, set walk speed, is pretty much the same as our set walk, walk speed uh, task. So we're going to get the player character and set the uh, not player character, get the character sorry, and set the character movement to the max walk speed. So on your find player task, grab the pawn out, choose get pawn, cast to character, get character movement. And you'll find it down at the bottom. And then from there, set max walk speed. And the value for that is going to come from that variable. Hit compile. Go back to the event graph and now drag that onto the end. Now we're also going to do a focusing task. Now I only want it to focus if it has a line of sight with the player character. So we're making a new function that handles that line of sight. So let's do this one as set focus. And we're going to drag out and do a line trace by channel. And we want the trace channel to be the camera channel. And this start point is going to be the pawn's location. So get the pawn, get actor location, and drag that out to start. We also want to add this pawn here to the actors ignored. So drag from actors ignored and do make array and plug that into your pawn. The end location is going to be the player character. So get player character and then you want to get their location. So it's going to draw a line between the two actors, between the pawn and the player. The out hit from this, we're going to split. So split this. And we're going to check whether or not we hit the player. So we have line of sight of them. So drag out from out hit hit actor and do equals object. And we'll plug in get player character. That will go into a branch. Like so. And if it's true, we're going to grab our controller out, which is get. And then from there, we're going to set focus. And the focus, new focus, is going to come from our out hit hit actor. You can drag that out over to here, like so. Hit compile, and we're done. So go back now to the event graph and drag that one out. So set focus, like so. And we're going to finish things off. We're going to finish execute. Don't forget to tick the success box. Hit compile and go back to our behavior tree. So now we've got this, we don't need these. I'm going to set my walk speed onto my task to 600, like so. Next, we actually don't need this simple parallel anymore. We can just do a move to. So I'm going to do this and close this and just drag the move to into the sequence. We also don't need to set anchor location anymore. Because we're using that cone now, it's going to work a lot better, so we don't need to worry about doing that. So we must move to, that's it. Then we've got the wandering task. We know we don't actually need to do this anymore because it's going to find something in that cone. Using that cone is going to save a lot of hassle. So here we're going to take this out and we're going to just set it to wait. And I'm going to take it to wait, uh, let's say 1.5 seconds with a random deviation of 0 0.5. And as you can see, it's a lot neater now. And we're going to do the same sort of process, but on the attack now. So on the attack, we can get actually rid of a lot of this stuff. So I'm just going to get rid of the set walk speed, the focus target, and leave the fine player task there, set the walk speed here to uh, what was it 400 it was and then a simple parallel we have the attack target move to to target location and reset state leave that there too hit save now let's see how this looks in game Ah, so the issue is they're running straight to the zero zero of the world. That's because I forgot to go into my find player task 
And we forgot, well, I forgot to add this location here to the player character's location. So I'm going to get this first part, get player character and their character location, copy, paste. And I want to add these two together. So plus vector there. And let's just space this out a bit. And that goes into the origin. So let's test this out. Okay, so now they are not sticking to their donut shape. Let's have a look what I've gone wrong there. So here they are, and I, uh, so they're not running to where they should be going. And I suspect, yep, so with the unit direction, we want to swap these two around. So the from is from the player's perspective, and the two is to the pawn perspective. Hit compile. And that should fix our cone direction because the cone's coming away from the player rather than the thing. So now you notice they just ran to the nearest spot closest to the player. Okay. So they're attacking, but they're not closing the gap. So that is because on the behavior tree, on the fine player task, I didn't change the distance here. So if I change the distance here to 50, uh, let's make sure everything else is all right. So 50 here. Yep. And yep, that's all happy there. Uh, we're going to change this actually a little bit lower this one we'll change this one down to 10 and oh no, I changed it but leave that as 50 actually leave it as 50 hit save and let's try that out a lot of this is just tweaking numbers to get looking and feeling right so here we see the enemies closing the gap and you see them pushing way they walk backwards yeah that's that donut shape taking effect so rather than staying close to me they're going to back off and walk back away from me which gives us that automatic really cool feeling that they're attacking and darting back to avoid uh, a parry or something like that which is really really fun so my next task is i want them to stop what they're doing if they are too far away from the player so if i run away i want them to chase me a lot quicker than they actually are so we're going to set up a service and a decorator to uh, sort of interrupt and cancel whatever they're doing uh, based on the distance from the player so on my enemy bt my behavior tree we're gonna make a new service to go on our movement here so go new service at the top and choose new bt service blueprint base and we're going to rename it immediately so bt service bt blueprint base and we call this one uh, get player distance and go back to your code for that and in here, we're going to put a tick on it to constantly check on the location and distance from the player. So here we're going to do a uh, override uh, tick AI. And we're going to get the player character. Get the location of that player character. If we get actor location from control pawn get actor location and you want to get distance between these two I, uh, objects so go distance and you'll see distance vector and you plug that in so not distance vector uh top in distance oh no it's distance vector sorry my bad so you get distance vector and you get return value float which is the distance that each of them are away from each other so for that we're going to plug that into a uh, blackboard key so I'm going to go back to my behavior tree into the blackboard and add a new key in your blackboard go to new key and choose float and this will be called player distance and hit save so then we're going to go back to our get player distance and we're going to store that into the blackboard key so go new variable and it's like we've done before you just add a blackboard key selector so this be distance to player and the type for that is a blackboard key selector instance editable hit compile and then drag it out and choose get from there we can then set value as float and plug in our value from our calculation and this is on a tick so it's constantly going to be checking on our player's distance wherever wherever we place this service 
So I'm going to close that and then go back to my behavior tree. So this service is going to constantly check on the distance from the player and we can use a decorator to abort whatever it's doing based on that decoration. So let's add that service in. So I'm going to add it to my movement sequence here. So I go add service and choose get uh, player distance. Making sure you plug in the correct key for the distance there. So player distance. Uh, you can put it wherever you else you want as well. So this is going to be ticking at 0.5 to random deviation 0.1. You can make that faster, slower, totally up to you. But um, basically whilst it's in this sequence, it's going to be doing this. So I'm going to turn this interval down slower. So I'm going to make it uh, faster, sorry, to 0.1 with a random deviation of 0. Next is the abortion of this. So how to make it abort this. So we're going to go to onto the weight here. Right click, add decorator, blackboard, and click on the blackboard. And we're going to tell this blackboard here to change the blackboard key to player distance. And you'll see you can type in a new key value. I'll type in the value of 500. And I only want this to wait if it is less than 500. If it's not less than 500, it's going to skip this and go ahead. Um, and what I want it to do is just skip it and find the player location and move to that location and keep doing that. And it will only wait and stop where it is if it's within a certain range. So if I hit save and show you that. So now if I run away, and you see after 500, they so they chase me. Now you can see they're still trying to attack me even though they're nowhere near me, which is kind of dumb. We don't want to do that. So we can use that player distance to check whether or not they should attack. So let's go to the, back to the tree, go to the attack panel here, and on the attack sequence, we're going to add another blackboard decorator to the attack sequence. So right click on here, add decorator, blackboard, and on this blackboard, we're going to go to blackboard key, player distance, 500, and if it's less than 500, it'll do this. If this result changes, I want it to abort whatever it's doing in here. So click on that blackboard change and go to Observer Aborts and choose Self. After that, we're going to tell it to reset the state after on the next selector here. So do Reset State and make sure we change the blackboard here to AI State. So what happens is if the attack is disabled and interrupted, the reset state will still trigger over here, allowing it then to go back into holding phase. Hit save and let's test that out. So now if I run away from them, they'll give chase and they will no longer try to attack me when being so far away. So at the moment, they're still facing me the whole entire way. So we can improve that slightly, very easily, by going into our uh, find player location task. And on the set focus function, on the false, we're going to tell it the controller to clear focus. So we drag from controller, search for clear focus, and then plug that into false. So if it can't see the player, it'll stop focusing on the player and just run straight ahead. So now you'll see they don't look at me the whole entire time, they will break their line of sight. Um, it does look like they're still trying to wait a little bit as well when they stop. So let's take a look at our behavior tree and take a look at the weight we've got going on here. And yep, I forgot to tick off the observer boards here to self. So change that to self and hit save. So now let's test that out and that's looking a lot better, okay? And that kind of brings me to the end of this series. Now you can go a lot further with this. You can tweak numbers and get them exactly how you like. You can add further conditions onto the attack procedures with a fight director. There's loads more you can add on to this. And if you want to know how to do dealing damage, I've got videos on how to get them to deal damage to the player, how to do different animations, and many other videos on the channel that will help you build upon this to get your enemies the way you want to be. However, with that caveat in, in mind, if you are still struggling on trying to get this working with other systems and other things like that, just let me know in the comments below and I'll see what I can do. But I'd like to bring this series to an end with this 
as we have gone through how to set up the AI to move, position themselves and attack the player using the fight director to control the action. Big thank you to all of my patrons and YouTube members for their patience and support with me completing this series. It wouldn't be possible without you guys so thank you so so much. And if you're watching this and you have subscribed, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of my future content released every single week and all my live streams I do each week too. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all next time. Bye bye.